everyone and welcome to PCR Online. I'm Mervet Al Asnaj. I'm an interventional cardiologist at Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And I'm here with Dr. David Meyer, who's a cardiologist from Duzan University Hospital in Switzerland. And he's currently training in interventional cardiology with a two year fellowship at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. We're going to discuss the late breaking trial timing of bioprosthetic valve fracture in transcatheter valve and valve intervention and the impact on valve durability and leaflet integrity. The trial was simultaneously published at Tudor Intervention Cert, uh, Journal. So welcome, David, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Hi, thanks very much for having me. So to start off, could you just explain to our viewers why the concept of bioprosthetic valve fra uh, fracture became a necessity in transcatheter aortic valve in valve replacements? Yeah. Absolutely. So you know that valve in valve intervention are performed more and more frequently in patients with degenerated surgical bioprosthesis that are not candidate for open heart surgery. And, and what we see often after valve in valve is that the THV is underexpanded and with high residual gradient. And you know, the long term impact of that is not hundred percent. Uh, defined, but definitely having an underexpanded THV with high residue gradient from the start is is not good for for long term clinical outcomes. So there was an there is a necessity of, of optimizing THV expansion, and bioprosthetic valve fracture is a technique that has been shown on the bench and in clinical series uh, to effectively do that. So the study you conducted with your colleagues addressed the timing of valve fracture on transcatheter heart valve leaflet integrity and the valve durability. Could you just briefly describe the methodology and design of the study that you did? Sure. So uh, first, a few more words of background. So you know that you can, um, you can fracture either before you implant the THV or after. And some people will advocate that it's better to fracture before to make sure that you can crack the surgical valve before you implant your THV. And, and, and some other people prefer to fracture after saying that you have, uh, in the end, you, the, the final result gives you a better expansion and better um, um, hemodynamic outcome of the THV. And this, there are some small clinical studies that have shown that that fracture after leads to better immediate function of the prosthesis of the THV. The problem, the potential problem with that is if you fracture after, you're going to do a high pressure inflation um, with a balloon inside a freshly implanted THV. And whether this is going to uh, result in damage to the leaflet and potential problem in terms of durability is unknown. So this, this is the, the gap that we're trying to address on the bench. Okay, so this is a bench study. It's a preclinical uh, data. So what we have done is that we had, um, we've tested three timing of fracture, okay? No fracture at um, the context of anvin valve, fracture before and fracture after. And we've done that with two groups of uh, THV, Accurate Neo and Sapien 3. And these valves were implanted in uh, mitral flow uh, that, that simulating the degenerated surgical valve. So we had six samples uh, with three timing of fracture for each uh, THV. And what we have done is that we have a way of simulating um, long-term results by putting this valve in an accelerated wear tester, which is um, a simulator that's going to open and close about 700 times per minute. And we've run that tester up to 200 million cycles, which is, according to ISO standards, it's a roughly five years in, uh, in a patient's lifetime. And, and after these 200 million cycles were reached, we put the valve uh, in another tester, a pulse duplicator that's going to do some hydrodynamic measurements for us, and that's going to give us um, effective orifice area of the valve, regurgitant fraction, and gradient. And that was the first part of the study. And then the second part is that we have cut the leaflets of the THV, and we've done histology analysis on these leaflets at three different levels, just at the surface of the leaflet with very high resolution scanning electron microscopy, a little bit deeper with second harmonic generation, which gives you uh, a depth of analysis of about 20 micrometers. And we've done full uh, thickness analysis uh, of the leaflet uh, on conventional uh, histology. Uh, that's the um, so, so global study. Relevant results that you came up with. So the, I think the main finding is that at 200 million cycles, the hydrodynamic function of both the accurate neo and the sapient three was better if 
the fracture was performed after valve involved. Okay, so larger effective orifice area, lower gradient, and no trade off in terms of regurgitant fraction. But what's also very interesting is that in terms of leaflet ultrastructure, there is no trade off. They don't, we don't really see any damage to the leaflet overall. If, if anything, the leaflets look better um, when fracture was performed after. The only thing that we found in, that could be a signal um, that you create a, a small damage is on the very surface of the leaflet with scanning electron microscopy. We see a little bit more of uh, um, a broken collagen fibers on the surface of, uh, of, of the leaflet. But overall, the structure of the leaflet is, is more preserved um, when you fracture after. So, you know, these results were attained through in vitro testing um, outside the body. Do you think they're representative of in vivo microscopic changes that happen? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And it's obviously the main limitation of this kind of testing. Um, the, the, the degenerative process that's going to occur inside the patient is going to be different, influenced by many other factors that, that's for sure. I think what we show is that at least the mechanical stress that you put on the leaflet is not generating a big signal of harm. And, but I mean, this is not going to replace clinical data. It's just trying to give some, you know, inform us in an area where clinical data are really lacking. But, the, you know, the, the group in Vancouver is also working on mechanism of degeneration of, 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 of valves. And we're looking at Explanted, we have an extended registry of valve and we're looking at mechanism of degeneration. So we hope that this is going to help to fill the gap. Yeah, that's very interesting data that's going to hopefully unfold in the near future. In the meantime, do you think we can correlate with cardiac CT in patients with valves that underwent fracture? Um, as you know, to date, the clinical implications of valve degeneration and um, HALT that's detected on CT and the long-term durability remains uncertain. Some of the short-term data suggests that HALT has no significant impact on 30-day outcomes or events, but do you think these will correlate with some of the emerging CT data with respect to um, valve degeneration and maybe even standardizing the definition? We don't have currently a standard definition definition of valve degeneration. Mm. Yeah, that's a very interesting topic. And uh, HALT is a fascinating process. And we're just starting to understand what is happening. And we need much more data. But, you know, it's unfortunately, we're not able to simulate for HALT. But because you maybe you could argue that having some superficial damage to the leaflet, maybe this is going to be more thrombogenic and you are going to have more hope. Maybe, I don't know, you could, you could argue with that. What, what I think is important is that the fact that you get a better expansion of the valve is probably protective for holes. I mean, we've seen from the recent, um, recent circulation paper about asymmetric THP expansion that this is clearly associated with holes. So, you know, it, it, it's hard to be, to have definitive conclusions, but, uh, for sure we need more data. Yeah, and I completely agree with you that there is data that's suggesting um, that better hemodynamics of the valve reduces halt and reduces or slows down degeneration. So perhaps figuring out how to fracture and the timing of fracture may help improve hemodynamics ultimately. But yeah. you know, you did mention that you used mainly two types of transcatheter valves, or you studied two types of transcatheter valves. Do you think we can extend the results to other valves, such as the Medtronic self-expanding valve? Um, can we extend these results to, um, you know, looking into more details? For example, those who have appropriate commissural alignment, those who have some cage deformation, and so on. Um, do you think those are factors that may impact the microscopic findings that you found? Yeah, I think it, it's very it's a very interesting question, and 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 no, I don't think you can extrapolate this result to any type of THV and any type of surgical valve because this is another point. We use the mitral flow, which has a fracture threshold that's not the highest. So some some valves have a fracture threshold that's very low, and some other have a fracture threshold that's very high, and some can even not be fractured at all. And I think if you need much more atmospheres to fracture the valve, maybe it's going to impact the results. That's one thing. And the other thing is that um, there is probably a difference between supraannular and intraannular valves in terms of the impact that you're going to have when you fracture. Because when you have an intraannular valve, you're going to apply much more force on the leaflet 
which are constrained inside the surgical valve. And on the other hand, when you have supraanal leaflets, probably the balloon pressure is going to be less uh, on the leaflet. So I think I, I don't think you, we can assume a class effect, and I would, you know, I don't think you, we can extrapolate for sure what would happen in in an evolved valve, for example. Well, David, I want to thank you once again for being with us today and kind of explaining the process. Um, I know many of us were considering valve fractures. Um, the timing is critical. But really, the study that you did helps us understand it at a more um, ground, ground level, really. Um, but we are waiting for other data. And certainly what you mentioned, the uh, explanted valves and examining those microscopically um, may shed more light. Uh, and perhaps outcome data from patients when we look at outcome data from randomized trials that are fracturing valves um, is something we're certainly all awaiting as well. Well, thank you, everybody. I want to thank our PCR viewer, online viewers for joining us today and um, stay tuned for the Euro Intervention publication that's coming out with this study. Thanks, David. Thanks very much.